Hey guys, before I begin looking over the Sega Genesis Mini, I just wanted to take the time to let you know that I don't have any professional equipment like cameras or lighting, so you may notice a lot of video noise outside the actual gameplay footage. Keep that in mind as you watch this video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. 16-bit arcade graphics. The 30th anniversary Genesis 16-bit action. Does. Does. Genesis. Does. Genesis does. Get Golden Axe, Shinobi 3, Fantasy Star 4, Streets of Rage 2, Shining Force, and Genesis many more. Does. Only with the Genesis Mini. 30 years young. That was all I literally needed to hear before I was flying over to Amazon and buying one of these. So, is the Sega Genesis Mini all hype? Is it any better than what we've seen with similar products in the past, such as the at game Sega Genesis Flashback? Or is this a quality product worthy of sitting next to your NES and SNES Mini? Let's take a look and find out. So here we have the Sega Genesis Mini. As you can see, it looks like we're getting the unit. It appears we're getting two three-button controllers. We got a nice little Genesis 30th anniversary emblem here. And we've got some basic text on here, but we care about what's on the back. So let's highlight some of the games that we'll be taking a look at in here. So we've got Echo the Dolphin and Castle of Illusions, we've got Alex Kidd, we've got Altered Beast, we've got Castlevania Bloodlines, we've got some Gunstar Heroes, Mega Man The Wily Wars, some Sonic games, uh, let's see, Streets of Rage, Monster World, Fantasy Star, and the two bonus games which are Darius and Tetris. So, looking pretty good. There's plenty of more games to look at. Let's see what the box has. Oh, this side tells us what we're getting. So, looks like it comes with some pretty standard things. Two wired controllers, an HDMI cable, a power cable. So, we'll be looking at the insides shortly. Alright, the box itself has a very 90s Genesis design to it, as you can see. Very reminiscent of the Genesis. So, let's see what's in here. Alright guys, and so we have our HDMI cable right over here. We have one of our controllers still in the wrapping here. We have our unit in this cardboard box. We have our USB power cable and of course our power adapter. So let's go ahead and take a look at the controller outside of this wrapping. And once you take it out and hold it in your hands, if you've ever held an original three button controller, this feels so right. There's the rough texture over on the D-pad here, the A, B, and C buttons over here all feel so great. And you can see that the B button right over here has that little marking to let you know it's the B button. Start button feels great. And honestly, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference between this and an original Sega Genesis controller, except for the USB plug right over here. So, this is what the controller looks like. Now let's take a look at the actual unit itself. So guys, here we have the little cardboard box that the Sega Genesis Mini comes in. And we're gonna go ahead and unbox that and see what we have available to us over here. So, let's see, I'm in our little plastic wrap here. Let's get our, our Sega Genesis Mini out of here. Ooh, this looks nice. Oh, they went ahead and covered this up. So, we'll take a look at that in a second. So, here it is, a little on off. We've got our reset, that button works too, that's interesting. We've got our uh, headphone volume jack here. We can raise this up and down. Uh, we have a port here for our two USB controllers. And uh, we have this port. This is, oh, it does open. Uh, it, it doesn't do anything. But hey, look, they, they added the port. So that's kind of funny. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Uh, our HDMI slot is right back here. Our USB DCN is in there. So yeah, this is what the console looks like. So. Let's see what we can do with this. Alright guys, let's go ahead and cut on our Sega Genesis Mini and see what's up. I'm kind of hoping that there's going to be like some Sega splash screen that's just going to yell out Sega at us. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. But that wasn't the case. Instead we got a language screen, which is fine. That's alright. Ooh, that sound effect was from Streets of Rage. And that song sounded like it was going to be Starlight Zone, so I guess it's a remix. Alright, so we've got like something to the effect of 42 games to check out. So let's see what they are. Here we got Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, Altered Beast, Space Harrier 2, Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe, Columns, Thunder Force 3, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, Strider, Sonic the Hedgehog, Toe Jam and Earl, Wonder Boy and Monster World, Alicia Dragoon, Kid Chameleon, Super Fantasy Zone, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 
Echo the Dolphin, Road Rash 2, Streets of Rage 2, World of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, Shining Force, Gunstar Heroes, Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master, Street Fighter 2, Special Championship Edition, uh, Landstalker, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Eternal Champions, Castlevania Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore, Earthworm Jim, Dynamite Heady, Mega Man The Wily Wars, Fantasy Star 4, Beyond Oasis, Light Crusader, Comic Zone, Vector Man, Virtual Fighter 2, Monster World 4, Darius, or Darius, however you pronounce it, and Tetris. Alright, so, should probably scope out some of the games. Let's check out our settings first, though. Please read this before playing. In rare cases, depending on health conditions, flashing screen... Oh, okay. This is just a, a warning in case you suffer from seizures. Alright. Uh, language is just to change that once you're here. Screen settings. Oh, look, a Sonic 2. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is because I like for things to appear proper. Oh, we got a little silhouette of Sonic with some speakers as a wallpaper. We have a bunch of blue squares and just pure black. So I'm probably going to be either between the Sonic speakers and the little uh, black screen. Staff credits. Oh, we're not going to look at this right now. Cause, oh, if I press A, I can move through it. But still, we don't have time for this right now. Uh, Lego notices. Oh man, much less do we have time for this. Oh, but same concept, I can move it around as I need to. Alright, so let's go ahead and return to menu. And I'm gonna try a game that I'm very familiar with. So let's start off with some Sonic the Hedgehog. Release year 1991, the game that inspired a generation of fans around the world. The first appearance of Sonic the Hedgehog. One button is all it takes to play this thrilling high-speed action platformer. During gameplay, hold start to save, load, or return to the main menu. Okay, good to know. It already sounds more accurate than the at game Sega Genesis flashback. Alright, so, moment of truth. I've got the controller in my hands. Let's see how this is gonna play out. So far, I can tell you, the controls are very responsive, the game looks like it's playing correctly. I see no hiccups, I see no stuttering. It is playing the game exactly as it should be. What I will say is that I notice that the sound effects are just ever so slightly delayed. And I'm noticing more so the sound effect being delayed when I jump. Because it should be doing it from the moment I leave the ground. But that's not the case. It's doing it like at the apex of my jump. controls really do feel well like I really like the way it's handling I feel like I'm playing on an actual Sega Genesis but yeah it's I mean someone who played Sonic the Hedgehog a lot growing up I can definitely hear that there is a delay now if you've never played like the Sega Genesis games religiously or you just don't remember, I don't think it's something that you would notice. But if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, like I am right now, it might just be a little distracting. But it's still an overall better product than the at game Sega Genesis flashback. All right, we got our Chaos Emerald. I'm gonna see if I can do one quick section here that I know used to push the Sega Genesis hardware and I'm just curious to see if it's gonna do the same thing. Well, good to know that that glitch is still there. 
get rid of these guys. Alright, here it is. Let's wait for that to come back. And here we go. Alright, so there was just a little bit of lag there, but that's to be expected because that happened in the Sega Genesis as well. But I'm not seeing any slowdown. Gameplay-wise, I don't see any slowdown. The game is playing exactly as I remember, sans the, uh, the sound issue. Even played the, uh, the extra life music correctly. I'm just burning through this level. Because there's a lot of things that have slightly different pitches. So I'm just checking to see if it's still going to play everything correctly. And so far, I haven't noticed any issues. If you guys are noticing something, please let me know in the comments. Alright, so we can back out of the game by holding down start. And we're greeted with the system menu, so we can save or we can load four different uh, save states, it looks like. We can reset the game from here, and we can return to main menu. So let's go to the main menu. Let's try some Castle of Illusion. Adventure to the land of dreams with Mickey Mouse and this action platformer, Mickey, beloved icon and plucky hero ventures into the castle of an evil witch to rescue the kidnapped mini. This is another game I played a lot as a kid, and at some point I wouldn't mind doing a let's play of this. Pulling it off the shelf and giving you guys a let's play of this great platformer from way back in the day. Oh, perfect. Alright, so we're gonna skip some of the story stuff here. I wonder what's beyond this door. Oh, Mickey, beyond this door is, uh, adventure. Alright, let's see if I can notice any sound delay here. Quite a few people were talking about it, and I tried not to watch anything that they said because I knew that I wanted to talk about this. And there is ever just a slight delay here, too. Oh my gosh. You'll notice it on impact. It should be doing the sound as soon as I land. But it's doing it once I've almost reached the, the height of my jump. But again, the controller feels great. The game is looking amazing. It's running perfectly, gameplay-wise. No slowdown. Oops. I'm not noticing anything that was not already in the game from way before. Is this our, uh, spider web area yeah but we're not gonna get th through this level too far there's other things to check all right let's return to the main menu uh what else can we try out let's try some streets of rage 2 this beat-em-up was one of the highest rated games on the Genesis and Mega Drive. Four fighters battle to rescue a friend captured by an evil syndicate. Yuzo Koshiro's soundtrack will pump you up. Supports up to two players. It might be a little harder for me to spot things in this game. Because I played Streets of Rage 1 a lot. But I didn't have access to, to Streets of Rage 2 until much later on. So yeah, they're... Definitely gonna be things that I'm gonna miss out on here. Alright, so we got Axel, Max, Blaze, and Skate. So let's give Blaze some uh, some camera spotlight moments. So beat the snot out of some thugs. Oh, 
right in the face. Mm, I don't, I don't know because remember, I, like I said, I haven't played this enough that I can tell. But I'm pretty sure that the sound effects are supposed to play as soon as I pick up the item. Let's beat up the evil Vin Diesels. And get suplexed. Yeah, see, like, I feel like the punching noise is supposed to happen as soon as I connect with his face. And that's not what was happening. These people are named Red Signal and Yellow Signal. This man just jumped out of the sewers like he's Casey Jones. Whoop. Oof. Imagine getting slapped in the face in the middle of the street with a pipe. Kikosho! Here I am thinking I'm Chun Li. Alright, so. Again, controls and plays fine. It's just. The sound is delayed. Even the sound sounds great. It's just. I can definitely sense that it is a little delayed. Alright, so let's back out of this game. Return to our main menu. What else can we scope out here? Hmm, Street Fighter. How's this gonna play? Based on the second iteration of the Street, of Street Fighter 2, this version added even more options like new moves, hyper mode, 11 speed settings, and group battle mode. Alright, so let's see how this one plays. This is a game that's normally played with six buttons, and this controller only has three. I don't know how this is gonna go. Alright, let's roll out with Ryu. And we're going to China. We're gonna face my girl Chun Li here. Ryu's looking like he got sunburned. I cannot kick. I only have punches. So... No Tatsumakis here, fellas. Oh, okay. I mean, if you're gonna keep doing that, right, Chun-Li? Probably not the wisest thing for you to do. Right into a Shoryuken. Right into a kick. I'm gonna end up making Sagat jealous. Well. I could definitely notice a little bit of delay here, too. I don't know if it was as bad as the other one. Like the other games we've tried, but 
I mean, it is there, I think. Alright, let's return to the main menu. Let's try out some other games. Let's try, uh, Castlevania. The famed action-adventure series gets a unique entry on the Genesis and Mega Drive. John Morris and Eric Lacard fight their way across Europe to stop Dracula from being resurrected. Alright, we're gonna skip all of the little introduction stuff. Ruins of the Castle Dracula, Romania. Alright, so, again, the sound is as I recall it. The game is playing smoothly. <laughs> the problem is the sound delay. And I mean, I guess it's not really a problem if you're not sensitive to it. But just be aware, if you're, if you're looking to pick up this item, it is there. I don't think there's going to be any sort of way to fix it later unless there's some sort of like soft mod that we can do on the Sega Genesis Mini itself. And that's probably a ways away in the meantime. You guys can see the it's playing just fine. I always forget that this level is basically a re redone version of of the first level from the NES game. playing just fine otherwise. I haven't noticed any kind of hiccups from the sound itself. Oh no, I got hit. There's like a billion bats. Oh yeah, that's right, he breathes fire, I forgot. Quit breaking the glass. So, this game is very clearly working. Alright, return to main menu. Ah, oh, Mega Man. Mega Man should be good for, for testing for any delays. Because the sound of his Mega Buster should occur the second that the pellet leaves his uh, arm cannon, his Mega Buster. All right, jump right into Cutman stage. Curious about running this one because this is a game that had issues for some people. Yeah, it's delayed here too. Oh yeah, I guess just across all of the games, there's uh, there's sound delay. I mean, it can't be helped. At least, I don't know if there'll be a way- I really don't think there'll be a way for them to fix it. I think it's just something that the Sega Genesis Mini is gonna have to deal with. Unless they make another one later on down the road. But this is definitely a step in the right direction. I say that because... If you've ever tried any of the at games Sega Genesis flashbacks, like the last one that they did was better than the rest, like the ones that they had previously done. But I mean, it's it still dropped the ball pretty hard. You like those? You like those dodging skills there? Those dodging skills from my Mega Man's. 
All right, so I think we've done enough testing for, for Mega Man. Let's see if we can uh, try another game. All right, um, let's just finish off with some Sonic 2. Sonic returns to save the world in his second game, considered by many to be the series' highlight for its enhanced speed and momentum. Tales of Twin-Tailed Fox also makes his debut, and the game features a two-player mode. So I'm happy to see that there is no, like, uh, frame skip happening in Mega Man The Wily Wars, because I know that was an issue that some people were having. And I'm already looking at the twinkles, and the twinkles look like they were not in sync with the sound effect, so oh boy. But so far so good, gameplay wise. None of the games I've tested so far have given me any like issues in how they run. So to that extent, feel confident that this is going to play the games that it comes with correctly. The only way this would have been neater, admittedly, the one thing I did like about the Ag Games Genesis is that they did have a slot so that you could put in your actual physical games and you'd be able to play them. I thought that was always pretty neat. But what good is it if it's not going to play it correctly? So if Sega ever wises up and, and creates like another Sega Genesis with HDMI output, I think it's going to do great and... Something's not right here. I don't think that it's playing all the sound effects for the rings. I could be wrong, but I could swear that this should be like making more ring noises. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be hearing way more rings, and I'm not. Whoops. I don't know. Th this is the first thing that I'm noticing that it's not doing correctly. It sounds like I'm only picking up like three rings and I know for a fact that I've always heard it do like a bunch of the ring noises so I don't know what was going on there but yeah there was definitely an issue there all right spits us back out into Emerald Hill Zone all right let's go ahead and back out But it played it correctly. I mean, that much is true. It did play it correctly. So, guys, I think that's about like 24 minutes or so worth of footage of me trying out a bunch of the games on the Sega Genesis Mini. Um, it's definitely playing well. Oh, look, we had this up here and I ignored it. Oh, we can do it by genre. Let's leave it at A to Z. So, guys, like I said, it, everything played well. The controller definitely feels right at home i definitely feel like i'm playing on an actual sega genesis the games all played flawlessly no hiccups no no issues nothing with the exception of the delayed sound now if you can't put the sound behind you the fact that it's delayed then i don't know if this is worth spending the 80 dollars on but this is a nice little introductory introductory product into the sega genesis line of course, if you really want to get hardcore, you can always look up other HDMI solutions like the uh, Mega SG, for instance. You can look that up and just, you know, build a physical Sega Genesis collection. That's always an option, right? But just be aware, guys, of what you're getting yourselves into. So if the sound doesn't bother you, this is a nice little $80, so $80 worth of 42 Sega Genesis games. So, guys, thank you for watching this review. Let me know what you guys thought of it. I could really use the feedback since this is going to be the first time 
that I review a product in video form ever. So I would really appreciate the feedback. Let me know uh, did I not answer specific questions that you guys had or are there other products you want me to cover? You know, just general feedback. I would greatly appreciate it. If you like this and you want to see the rest of my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel where you'll catch a lot of Let's Plays, uh, uh, uploads of my streams from over on Twitch and just overall other videos and maybe some more reviews. So yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll see you either in the next thing that I review or my next Let's Play. Until then, take care.